A very good Monday evening to all of you. You're watching The Big Story where we will discuss the hottest topic of the day and explain why it matters. I'm Harianto Diman coming to you live from The Straits Times Newsroom. More than $1 billion will be needed to speed up and complete plans to triple Singapore's cycling path network. This figure was revealed by Senior Minister of State for Transport Lam Pin Min in Parliament today. The plans come on at the back of the recent e-scooter ban on footpaths. The Ministry of Transport is now in talks with the Finance Ministry to get the funds to complete plans to extend the cycling path network in Singapore to about 1,300 kilometres. We had previously announced a plan to extend the network of cycling paths from 440 kilometres to 750 kilometres by 2025 and 1,300 kilometres by 2030. We will accelerate the pace of implementation by a few years. We are discussing with HDB and Parks and the local town councils on a practical timeline. We are also discussing with, with our uh, Ministry of Finance colleagues to secure additional funding for this purpose. More details on the funding will be announced during the debate on the new budget for the Transport Ministry. Mr Lam also added that since the ban on the use of e-scooters on footpaths, accidents involving the device have dropped by about 30%. To discuss more on this, we have journalist Toh Ting Wei. Welcome, Ting Wei. Mm -hmm. Ting Wei, if we could just uh, start off uh, by telling us, you know, what will the funds be used for? So basically, the government had announced last time that they wanted to triple the cycling network from 440 km mm -hmm. now to more than to about 1,300 km by 2030. Right. So what they are doing now is to revise the entire timeline. So today, Dr Lam committed in Parliament to bring it forward by a few years. So a few years is not very. It's quite vague, but then, I mm. mean, it sounds quite significant. So, they don't really have a specific breakdown of how they want to spend the money yet, but then I imagine quite a lot of money will be needed to put out contracts over the next few years to mm. try to achieve an earlier deadline, com to convert like maybe some road space into cycling paths and also to convert some footpaths into shared paths. Right. And think, wait, you know, how has the situation been on the ground since uh, the ban was implemented? And of course, uh, with uh, the zero tolerance uh, policy kicking in as well since New Year's Day. Yeah, so I think for the, after the new zero tolerance stance kicked in, I think probably anecdotally and based on the numbers, mm. why is the number, the peop number of people caught riding on footpaths and also what you can see on footpaths, it seems to have dropped significantly. Yeah. So what was reviewed in Parliament today was that people have said that since they announced the ban, there was a 30% drop in the rate of accidents involving e-scooters. And also for a survey conducted by REACH, the government's feedback unit, it right. found that two in three people thought that footpaths were safer now as compared to before the ban. Mm. So for this, this week so far, LTA said that they have uh, they have detected 24 cases of yep. people riding on footpaths. Mm. So for that one, I guess the interesting thing is that during their op overnight operations from Friday night to Saturday morning, they yeah. caught 16 people within that time span, yeah. as opposed to eight in the three or four days before. So mm. I think it's that now in the day, we don't really see that many e-scooters on footpaths before, but it seems like at night, maybe more of them are coming out. So that's yeah, they're, they're a bit bolder at night, I suppose, probably thinking that they could uh, avoid uh, hmm. the uh, enforcement officers, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, think we let's now focus on the food delivery riders. Hmm. You know, what about on the food delivery riders front? Hmm. They are the most affected by the ban, hmm. right? How is the situation looking for them now? So for the numbers today, again, that came out in Parliament. So a total of around 6,100 food delivery riders are eligible to use tap into the 7 million trade-in grant that the government has set up with food yeah. delivery companies. Mm. So in a nutshell, this grant gives them about $1,000, no, up to $1,000 to trade into e-scooters or bicycles or PMAs. Right. So about almost 60% of them have applied for the grant so far and 20% of these applicants have gotten the devices. Mm. Because most of them actually like about 75% they have applied to switch to e-bikes yeah. and there's still a lot of e-bikes in Singapore at the moment so there's a shortage mm. so for them they are waiting for their devices so only 20% out of the 3,000 plus they have applied have gotten their new devices so I guess for those who have chose to continue and have applied for the grant good news for them because it's approved just that now they need to wait for their e-bikes mm. but the interesting thing is for those 
the remaining 40% whoever applied for the grants, it will be interesting to see where they go to, like whether they have switched to new jobs or right. whether they are still riding their e-scooters. Right, I mm. guess um, more still needs to be done to kind of like find out, right, uh, with these 40%. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, I think, for coming on to the show to okay. share with us more on what uh, transpired uh, in Parliament earlier on. Mm. To read more on this, you can check out our website, straightstimes.com.